Hello, my name is Geraldine Richardson. I am the voluntary chairperson of the South Inner City Community Development Association. We are a committee of local residents from the Liberties of Dublin who are committed on a voluntary basis to tackling the social, educational, health, economic and environmental problems facing our local community. Our mission is to create a community in the Liberties where all, particularly those most excluded, feel valued and welcomed. Over these past two years, we have been actively working to establish a mediation programme across the entire community. We have established a community mediation programme in helping our residents deal with local disputes. In order to promote a community approach, we have introduced peer mediation in a local primary school, Skull St Seamus. We have expanded our programme to Presentation School, Warrenmount, with further plans to include other schools in the coming year. We feel that finding an agreed solution to local disputes will help build a more reflective, positive and peaceful community. In the following video, you will hear from the principal of Skull St Seamus, a teacher, and you will also see a demonstration of peer mediation in practice. I hope that you will find this video helpful in understanding our approach. Our school is situated in an inner city area of extreme disadvantage. There are huge social and economic problems within the area. We're an all boys senior school, so we would have particular, I suppose, um, problems around behaviour and aggression. There's huge aggression, a lot of the children. So we're really keen to take on board any new ideas and help us deal with that. Um, it's very, very appropriate for an area like this, for a Desh one school. It's very appropriate. Um, I think it's had a very positive impact across the school for staff and children alike. We, when we were trained, we had everybody involved in the school community trained. So psychologists who work in the school, counsellors who work in the school, SNAs, after school club, teachers, everybody was trained. So it's a real whole school approach to managing behaviour and de dealing with it in a positive way. We would always have had a very positive attitude towards behaviour. Um, and I suppose in the restorative practice there's a big focus on affirmative statements. Now we would have been doing that previously because we would have had training in other programmes that, so we, that was brought forward but it kind of just consolidated the work we were doing. But I suppose the greatest gift from restorative practice has been the questions. Um, it's an incredible tool for teachers who face, who face the same dilemmas every single day with children having arguments in the yard. Um, so instead of now saying, you're doing it again, what are you doing it for again? We have a set of questions to go through, so it just eliminates the confusion. The children, it really calms them down. It calms down a very aggressive situation. They're familiar with the questions. They know what's going to, what's going to be asked of them, and they know they're going to get their chance to give their side of the story. So it eliminates the shouting. Um, it's, had, it's incredible the impact it's had in the yard and in classrooms, just between children. Another thing we found very useful is the, more, the use of formal conferences where if we have an incident of a particular child being difficult in a classroom, maybe causing very disruptive behaviour, we would have a facilitator who is an, a member of staff who's not directly involved with that child or with that class and their parents are invited in and the same questions are used in a particular order and the child is given the opportunity to hear how his behaviour is affecting everybody and it's very powerful the impact that can have when someone actually hears the very real impact that their behaviour is having on the people around them and we've seen some really positive changes from that. The feedback is really positive, mostly because it's really simple to do. There's no, you don't need gadgets or equipment or resources, all you have is your question card. So it's, it's very simple to do. We'd all, we would use quite a lot um, the check-in in the morning, we'd ask the children how are they feeling on a scale of 1 to 10. And that can kind of flag a child who gives you a one or a two, so it immediately alerts you to maybe something's wrong with this child this morning. It's a very simple approach. It takes not even a minute, mm -hmm. and yet the teacher has a really good overview of the mood of the class that particular day, and if there's anyone they should be concerned about. Um, the teachers are very positive about it. They love the questions. They circle time again. We would always have done circle time, but we would have done circle time, I suppose. Tell me your favorite this and your favorite that. Whereas now, circle time is used to solve a problem. And, but the main focus is always that the children are aware that their, their behaviour affects other people, that they don't live in a bubble and that other people are impacted and affected by what they do. And they, you know, when they're asked the question, you know, what do you think should happen next? They're very realistic and they're often really hard on themselves as to what they think what should be done. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's really powerful the impact that, that it's had. What happened? 
Uh, I punched Ben and all of them. Ben pushed me. What were you thinking about at the time? Uh, when Ben, when Ben uh, pushed me and I punched Ben and then I was... What have your thoughts been since? Sad and angry. Who has been affected by what you did? Ben. In what way have you, have they been affected? Because I punched Ben. Ben punched, pushed, Ben, ben pushed me. What happened? Um, me and Eric were playing out in the yard and then um, Eric punched me and then I pushed him into the wall. What were your thoughts at the time? Um, sad. What have your thoughts been since? Um, that I shouldn't uh, um, hit Eric back. How has this affected you and others? Um, because me um, and Eric were fighting. What has been the hardest thing for you? When he punched me and then um, I uh, pushed him. What do you think needs to happen next? I think about the time now and, uh, and detention. What do you think needs to happen next? Same as you said. Do you think you should say sorry and shake hands? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. But the previous training I would have had in a, in a different programme, there was no acceptance of the kids' behaviour. They weren't the ones to decide. With, with this programme, they get to understand how their behaviour has impacted on people around them, on themselves. Um, I find this one more positive right. than the previous one that I've done. The kids know now that they're going to be listened to. They know that they're going to have their turn to speak. So if there is any sort of an incident, they're pretty calm in explaining it when, when we go through the questions that they um, they're, they know that we're willing to listen to their side as well. They still will accept responsibility for what they've done, but they're, they're, there's more of a positive attitude around the school because of it. Has the school got any better since you did this training? Yeah. In what way? Um, there's not that much fights anymore now. It's, everything's getting under control now. And does, do people know who to go to if they want to sort out a problem in the school? Um, sometimes, uh, sometimes you just stand by a wall themselves and just sort it out themselves and sometimes you just walk over to the teacher and tell them. So Dan, is it better to sort it out yourself or go to the teacher? Sort it out yourself. Why is it better to sort it out yourself? Because if you go to the teacher, they just send you to the Miss Brown. And what would you rather do? I saw that myself. What do you think? <laughs>